Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the third Green Plus webinar. As you may already know, Green Plus 2022 is the first exhibition and conference completely dedicated to sustainable solutions in the plastics and rubber sector. It will be held in Milan this year from May 3 to 6, and it will cover an entire hall in Fiera Milano. The show will be also concurrent with other important exhibitions, Ipakima, Print for All, Intralogistica Italia, and Farmintech. Through this important showcase, exhibitors will have the chance to display their innovative solutions revolving around recycling, reuse, energy efficiency, and sustainability. It will mainly focus on the recycling of a material, plastics, very much spread in everyday life and whose sustainable aspects are not often very popular. Today's webinar will be the third of a series of online events that will lead us to the exhibition itself and it will give the speakers the chance to talk about their technologies and products. We have today three important Italian companies that made correct environmental communication a trademark for their activities. We have Technofair, Femic, and Filtech. We were supposed to have today also Gamma Meccanica, but unfortunately they couldn't make it and we apologize for the inconvenience. RUR is the name of the project gathering all four companies. It's a, a, a blog, a portal, a European project whose mission is to bring awareness on the importance of plastics recycling and improve citizens' effort towards environment in order to help them understand the real advantages of a correct plastics recycling. Before we start with the speakers, I would like to remind you that we will have a moment after the presentations to answer some of your questions. So if you have any, feel free to write them down in the chat below. Uh, first speaker of today is Marina Samailova, representing RUR. So we can start now with her presentation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Marina Samailova, and today I will talk about RUR project. This is RUR project. First of all, what does it mean, RUR? The, main, the name of the pro, this project immediately asks you about R. The R is a recycling, but not, but not only. It's also about recovery, reuse, reprocessing. The main purpose of the project is talking about the, all these R, especially about recycling, the importance of plastic recycling. The idea behind the project is to share as an expert in the field, the technologies underlying the recycling process, the applications and the results. Who are these experts? We are the companies that have been active on the market of the plastic recycling for many years. IUR project was created by the will of four Italian companies, Femic, Filtech, Gamma Meccanica and and Technofair, together with Plastic Recyclers Europe, the Association of European Recyclers. The project is grateful for support of 45 companies from Italy and Europe. These companies have chosen RUR project to share all they know about plastic recycling and do their part of highlight the value of this noble material. IUR team strongly believes that education is essential to make an actual change in everyday habits. The objectives include the willingness to create a synergy among the education system, families and companies to develop environment responsibility. Plastic is everywhere, easy to get and just as easy to throw away. Simple, therefore, to make it the negative protagonist of today's environmentalist struggles. Plastic recycling is extremely sensitive subject worldwide. IUR keeps on talking this issue not only to raise consumer awareness, but also to show less no technical aspects for its process. Plastic is commonly demonized material simply because little is known about it. It's undeniable that plastic has become a major player in climate struggles. 
Let's face it, it's a potentially harmful and polluting material if we don't manage it correctly. It's also undeniable that it has become immensely important in various areas. RUR would like to offer an objective point of view and correct information about this topic. How? By letting professionals talk about everything that might be invisible to the eye, by allowing everyday room to an active and concuse debate which is created by community of tens of thousands of users. Today, RUR project is divided into six official pages on Facebook. Besides the Italian one, there are RUR Greek, Dutch, German, Spanish, and Portuguese. There are 70,000 followers on these pages. IUA is active on LinkedIn pages. There are three pages in different languages. IUA Northern Europe in English, IUA Central Europe in German, and IUA Southern Europe in Italian language. In addition to social activity, RUR is also a website that publishes periodic unpublished content on plastic recycling, an important tool that offers the possibility to further develop the many topics touched on social networks. We work on every post and article. We respond to every comment in the language. We have a good atmosphere to discuss, explain, but also dispute with uh, facts each post, comment, or article. We avoid an uncontrollable anger with no response. The project talks not only in different languages, but also on different issues with audience who is interesting in different fields. It could be an article about fashion and recycling, where we talk about the fashion as the second most polluting industry in the world after the oil industry. Did you know about it? Based on a report by the United Nations, the fashion industry is responsible for 20% of the global waste of water and 10% of carbon dioxide emissions in addition to the highest production of greenhouse gases compared to all interna international shipping and air transport. In the article, we showcase several Italian projects for sustainable fashion produced using recycled plastic materials. I'll give you the most interesting fact about one of the most popular outdoor garments in the world, the parka. Maybe you don't know, but the parka is one of the most recycled item of clothing in, and is now made of 100% polyester made from recycled PET PET bottles. So what about you? Have you ever worn or bought recycled clothing? Think about it next time you go shopping. Even how you shop and the choices you make contribute towards the sustainability of the environment in which you live. So it was a fashion. How about fundamental knowledge in plastic and recycling? Have you ever wondered what are the most recycled plastic materials? We explain the symbols identifying the various plastic materials and how each of them is recyclable. First place go to HDPE, high density polyethylene, a precious, rigid and resistant material which is used in the recycling chain, right? Because it's resistant and versatile. More and more advanced technologies make it possible to re regenerate it perfectly. This common and versatile material is found in much of the waste you send for recycling, such as bottles for cleansing, shampoos, and detergents. Italy, Germany, and UK are the countries who recycle the highest percentage uh, of HDPE. 
The second place goes to PET, which is used for instance to make plastic bottles for water and soft drinks, as well as many non-food containers and various types of packaging. All these products are the most disposed plastic waste from private households. From recycled PET, you can make padding, fleece sweaters, and various types of fabrics, as well as, of course, bottles, thanks to bottle-to-bottle -bottle recycling. This material is the most recyclable one. The third, the third place goes to PVC the most versatile and maybe uh, best known plastic material. Recycled PVC products include packaging film, cosmetic bottles, detergents, articles for medical use. In particular, PVC is considered as an excellent construction material. Recycled PVC is commonly used to make window profiles, vinyl flooring, construction goods, rainwater covering and drainage system. PVC recycling is growing in Europe. Over 728,000 recycled tons have been recorded in the year 2020. And 1 million is expected to be reached by the year 2030. To round all this overview of articles, I want to say that IUR would like to become a tool that helps us to see a problem and solve it. There's no enemy on this field. We all should be interested on this issue. It's important to understand that IUR project wants to unite the companies from plastic recycling field to create a community of professionals to raise awareness of European public on plastic recycling to educate them. Too many companies support the project, even if they are competitors on the market, because the project was found with another mission, non-profit mission, create educated future, green and healthy, improve our world by changing our habits. Recycling plastic is beneficial for all, Large quantities of products can be created and consequently the environment can be helped. The use of energy and the primary resources is limited. And at the same time, the circular economy can be boosted. Together, we can create a necessary material for social insight. We will work together as a team. And talking about team, I realized that I need to mention about Replanet magazine. The magazine dedicated to the recycling, exclusively to the issue of plastic recycling, which compare points of view, opinions, and highlight the technical innovation and regul regulatory insights, giving everyone a voice. In conclusion, I want to say that, that the project IOA is aimed to rise and extend. Together, we can do it better. The IUR project is growing and we will be happy if you choose to support the project. The smart, the sustainable future, support us. Thanks for your attention. So we can go on now with the second presentation of today, which is from Technofer, Mr. Mirko Gazzi, sales technician. Good morning. Today we will talk about Technofer. Sustainability and innovation are two key points of today and future economy. Sustainability is a way of behaving in every aspect of life, but also a business philosophy aimed to improve industries and markets in a greener way. Innovation is the means to reach the goal of sustainability. And with new technology, we improve the way we do business. Technofer put these two points together and create its own formula. Why sustainability? 
the answer is pretty simple. The concept of sustainability was born to safeguard people's health and the environment without sacrificing society success. This means that the scholars are making society more conscious about their problem, creating solutions to this problem and applying them to economy and everyday life. One of the problems of our society is with no dupes waste. In Europe, we produce around 2.5 billion tons of waste per year. Every sector contributes to this problem, especially construction, extractive, and manufacturing industries. Waste is globally increasing, and it is estimated that, that it will rise of about 3.4 billion tons by 2050. Below, we can see a graphic showing the waste situation around the world, where we may notice Asia and the Europe is as more relevant. This book has to the agenda 2030 for sustainable development. The world set 17 common goals to be achieved before 2030 for a better and more sustainable future for all. The goal 12 is addressed directly to world economy and uh, it aims to guarantee sustainable models of production and consumption. How? Having global food waste through prevention, reduction, recycling and reuse, and the encouraging business to adopt sustainable practices. So, the answer to global waste problem is technology, or better, recycling technologies. As we can see from this graph, the situation of plastic waste in Europe is quite problematic. On the left, we can see where plastic waste is generated more. And on the right, we can see how it's treated. Only the 30% is recycled, a very low percentage compared to traditional disposal. The 39% incinerated, which generate air pollution, and the 31% buried in landfills, which means soil and water pollution. We can do certainly better. So let's see what is already possible to adopt for the recovery of plastics material. Let's start with PET, a material used in many production like bottle for water and beverage, which are the most common. Technofair develops specific system for PET recycling. Our plants allow to obtain a flakes ready to transform in the final recycling stage, and therefore to reuse for a new production of bottle. Technofair technology is also applied in the recovery of polyolefin plastics material, commonly divided into film and rigid. Also for this material, Technofair has developed specific system. In fact, this production on street in various steps of the plant are ready to move on the next recycling phases and start a new life as new product. And other ways, through history, Technofair has applied its know-how in other recycling sectors, driven by needs of society, customers, and market. Waste is not made only of plastics. There are many other types of waste that need to take into consideration and treat it. At Technofair, we develop machine, plants, and technologies for different kinds of waste. The ultimate goal is to recover waste material and to make them 
valuable both for industries and environment. For this reason, our R&D is always studying new ways to return waste into the source. Two of Technofair recycling innovation are paper mill pulp rejects recovery system and the packaging technology. In the first, the paper fiber is separate from the plastics material, allowing its introduction into the production process of paper recycling, thus avoiding waste. The packaging technology instead has been developed to valorize packaged waste and to make it sustainable. The packaging system separates the product inside from the outside packaging, allowing both of the materials obtained to be reused in many different ways. Among the production rejects in the paper mill industry, pulp rejet is the most evident and impacting on economic and environment level. It was in fact perceived an, as an irrevocable rejet, destined for length. Technofair developed a recovery and assignment technology and proposed a solution tailored to the customer to recover the recycled fiber. This almost separated from the plastics material is reintroduced directly into the manufacturing process of the paper mill, obtaining up to 90% saving compared to the previous manager's cost. Technofair the packaging technology allows to separate the packaging from the product inside, generating secondary raw material. Thanks to this technology, every company can recover and valorize packaged waste from com all different steps of the production cycle. This leads to many benefits and plus on the economic level, improving also the ecological footprint. Today, we want to talk about the packaging system that Technofair developed for Fratelli Cellino. The client operates in a food industry and it produces different types of goods, from pasta to melba toast. Its primary need was improving production processes and recovering waste products, saving money from disposal service. Waste causes during production process are various, from wrong packaging production to the incorrect cut shape of the products. Our solution was a personalized the packaging system capable of separating internal product, Melba Toast, from the outside plastics packaging. Thanks to the packaging system, it is possible to valorize this material, to, is to say, turning them into valuable resources. For example, the organic part separated from the depackaging may be used in a renewable energy industry or in animal feed industry, or it may become fertilizer for agricultural industry. On the other hand, packaging can be recycled and uh, used to create new plastics material. Using Technofair technology, our customer reached his goal. They increased their production process efficiency, saving on waste management cost. They are having even more green, recycling and recovering both material obtained from the packaging system. The environment benefits coming from this process are a lot. First of all, thanks to the waste valorization, these packaged products will not end up in landfills. This aspect reduces pollution, improving transport management and reducing landfill greenhouses gases. 
Also, enhancing waste material, we can reduce the usages of raw material that are less and less available around the world. Thanks for your attention. We can proceed now with the third presentation of today, uh, which is from FIMIC, Ms. Erika Kanaya. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Erika Kanaya, Sales Director for FIMIC. Today, we are speaking about FIMIC and before uh, speaking about our company, I would like to uh, speak with, uh, with you about change in plastic recycling perception, how they change in the last 10 years. When I started in FIMIC in 2011, the world of plastic recycling was very different. China had not yet closed the border of importing waste, and I found myself abroad with some customer who did not see any benefits or economic returns in installing an automatic screen changer in their extrusion line. About 70% of the customer I visited in those years, and I took about 100 flights here, recycled mainly post-industrial waste, and in the case of harder to process waste, they simply shipped to China. The most shocking case I experienced at that time was in the United States. Customer just replied, laughing, that for the few pennies they paid to landfill dirty waste, they would never buy an automatic screen changer. In 2017, however, the China ban on waste imports shuffled the cart and obviously created a great chaos initially. At that time, post-consumer waste had to be necessary recycled internally within Europe and the difficulties of managing higher contamination levels took on a different weight than ever before. Just calculate that we, as FIMIC, have gone from 16 machines per year in 2016 to 31 machines in 2017. So the perception of the need to process more complicated and contaminated materials automatically, that is reducing the presence of the operator as much as possible and reducing the cost of spare parts too, was almost an immediate reaction. But please remember, Recycling is not an obligation, it is our responsibility. In my opinion, the Chinese ban, then followed by other countries too, brought the first change of perception towards plastic and recycling. The perception of recycling entered our lives because companies had been forced to change and the market understood this moment as a great turning point. As we all know, there was another very strong change in 2018, probably all connected to the first change of direction of 2017. And all of a sudden, plastic has become a polluting material. While before plastic waste was simply shipped abroad, now it had to be recycled internally. But to, we have realized that it was often thrown away. Bioplastic have grown up 400% from 2013 to 2018. In only six years, the turnover has grown by 87%. Obviously, RUR was born there, which Marina has introduced before me in an understanding way. But to conclude this small timeline about the perception of the concept of recycling, we can fast forward to 2020, because the pandemic has changed our perception again. The blockage of almost every human activity from transport in terms of logistics to the working activity in general of many industries that unfortunately had to stop for a few months, has brought Dolphin to Venice, clear waters everywhere, cleaner air, and the perception of need to preserve nature and environment. In the meantime, plastic has undergone a further change of perception. It has become extremely useful on a medical and sanitary level. That was nothing new. It had always been a reality, but the environment around us had changed. Our needs had changed. 
And our survival during the several lockdowns finally led us to understand that like all things, there are two sides to the coin. On one hand, we need plastic. On the other hand, we need to use it and reprocess it correctly and responsibly. While I was preparing this webinar, I found a sentence on Google that uh, it me leaked like a rock. It said, children's quotes on recycling. And this already says a lot because for children it is important to awaken a conscience, but on the contrary, it is taken for granted that adults already have it. Garbage is a great resource in the wrong place that lacks someone's imagination to be recycled for everyone's benefit. And from this beautiful quote for kids, we can then pat ourselves on the shoulder and confirm that we are doing a great job. The recycling chain in Italy is in fact extremely active with as many as 35 plastic packaging waste sorting plants. 9% of packaging is sent for disposal in landfill, 43% of plastic packaging is sent for recycling, and 48% destined to energy recovery. In 2025, however, we must reach 50% as a goal at the European level. So we have to work on that 7% in just a few, four years. And most importantly, if possible, also expand the target to plastics that are not just coming from packaging. Because we know that there are various types of plastics and we can't just focus on the packaging source. Once the targets are made clear, the Italian partner in support of recyclers who are committed to improving their technology day after day are numerous. At an important trade fair in our industries in 2019, 429 of the 3,333 exhibitors were Italians. So we can safely say that there are many specialists in this industry in Italy. And in fact, Green Plus is precisely gathering these experts to be able to incorporate our know-how in a four-day conference. FIMIC, from this point of view, has specialized itself in developing technology focusing on removing residual contamination after the sorting and washing steps. Based on the type of contamination or the amount of residual contaminations, we have a different range of technology available. Since FEMIC developed the first screen changer in 1998, we have really come a long way. Just look at what's happened in the last 10 years. And as a result, we too have involved and reorganized ourselves to improve our filtration technology and allow recyclers to reprocess more and more materials available according to their specific needs. We can still talk about post-industrial material, which obviously has not disappeared from the market yet. In this case, we have recently completed the development of a filter suitable for an automatic but fine and more delicate filtration. Then in fact, use a continuous woven mesh screen belt, which as we know, is perfect for the filtration of material that are not very contaminated, max 1%, and are small in size. In 2022, it will be stored and obviously we will later publish all the information in more detail. The post-consumer material, however, in my opinion, is the challenge for the future and different FEMIC filtration technology are focused to recycle it. We are talking about the RAS filter, the ERA filter, and the GEM filter. Our world-famous RAS melt filter is reaching the 400 serial number. It's a versatile filter, sold worldwide, and allows to handle the most contaminating materials on the market. RAS efficiently and economically removes any contaminants such as paper, metals, aluminum, wood, rubber, and sand. Generally speaking, our customer use from one to one laser to one to two laser screens per month. On average, the metal loss is reaching maximum 
additionally to the percentage of contamination to be removed. RES does not need pre-filters and can achieve up to two tons per hour with LDP or HDP material on only one screen laser, drilled, or punched, depending on the required filtration level. In the case of every high, or very high and potentially aggressive contaminations, there is also the possibility of installing an ERA melt filter. That is a filter made of two filtration chambers, one after the other. This allows you to avoid two filters on the same line because the ERA screen changer filters twice in a single machine. In the event of an increase in only production, GEM takes over to reach up to three tons of LDP or HDP, or even up to five tons of PP, logically depending on MFI and filtration level. In this case, we are talking about a twin filter. As we increase the filtering surface of the RES 700, almost 4,000 square centimeter, with only two screens by 35%. The GM600, in fact, offer a filtration surface of 5,550 square centimeter on only two screens in the same machine. To complement our product range, we have launched a new product in September this year, the Femic SPA, a screw pump dedicated to the world of recycling as it avoids the use and the limitation of gears operating with the screw instead. In this way, you will therefore avoid to install a safety or protection pre-filter, and you will achieve extremely low maintenance cost. All this is FEMIC, 65 screen changers supplied worldwide in 2021 alone, 39 professionals dedicated to the world of plastic recycling to improve the quality of plastic as a value for the future. Many thanks. Last but not least, we have now Filtech presentation with Mrs. Maria Elena Veronese. Welcome to you all. And uh, to receive a the material professionally treated uh, previously from the systems of our colleagues, there are the Filtech pelletizers that it is a pleasure to introduce you first introducing me. I'm Veronese Maria Elena, uh, Sales and Marketing Director of FinTech. I share with you our uh, introduction. FILTECH is an Italian manufacturer specialized in systems for the processing of the plastics on the market for nearly 30 years. <clears throat> Our pelletizers are 100 made in Italy and exported all over the world. To be a specialist allows us to be able to identify the right pelletizer for the different production needs, offering so the maximum level of customization and flexibility together with advanced technologies without forgetting the world where we live in. Further to the underwater and water in pelletizers, well known all over the world, we produce screen changers, single or double plate, vertical uh, or horizontal dryers for plastic pellets or flakes vented vibrating screens for pellet spooling and classifications up to three different levels, water filtration or filtration and cooling systems, and obviously the dye plates, the heart of our pelletizers. The project we will talk about has been realized by an underwater pelletizer type. This type of pelletizer is a versatile equipment that perfectly fits to the cut of polymers with high melt flow index. Talking about the recycle, also a matter of today's discussion, polyolefins such as 
PP and all kind of PE or PT, PS, ABS, or biopolymers such as PLA and others. But it can also give uh, very good results with materials dedicated to the compound. This system characteristic is to produce well distinct granules, usually with a spheric shape, in a granulation chamber full of water, so with the blades completely inside the water. This assures a so homo homogeneous product without agglomerates. Now talk about the green transformation of the EPS. The request done from our customer was to give new life to granules obtained from recycled waste of expanded polystyrene, food trays and packing. Originally intended this for sale and obtain a construction materials packaging or other uses. Starting from uh, standard size, filtered and degassed granules, previously obtained from a first filtech uh, underwater granulator, it was decided to create a second customized one to obtain from the same product, PS, uh, unexpanded microgranules containing a pentan gas and color master batch. To keep the gas trapped and obtain not expanded granules, we have created a system to maintain a constant pressure of seven bar from the granulation chamber where the microgranules are cut to the conveying of the granules into the centrifuge where the separation from water take place. Sorry, in this slide, you can see the result step-by-step step and the final result. The filter pelletizer's cutting head can mount dye plates heated by diathermic oil or electric heaters. The first system is a specialized um, sorry, the first system in special cases can assure once more homogeneity of eating of the dye plate, avoiding so the freezing effect that could happen, facilitating the scrolling and passing of the melt inside the holes. Our dye plate are composed by a single block of metal this assured them a high resistance. The drilling of the dye plate is done according to a tailor-made special design. Thanks to their construction feature of hardening, the surface of the dye plate can be grinded more times before they must be replaced completely. This kind of dye plates lend themselves well to the production of micro pellets as in the project already displayed. The pellets obtained at the end of the process are cooled and conveyed in water. Thanks to a closed loop circuit of the water, filter equipment can warrant an optimization in the process water, water and energy consumption. <coughs> The hourly capacity can vary until now from 80 to 6,000 kilos. In the early future, Filtech will expand the product's range, introducing a pelletizer able to reach production not covered now. Filtech can be uh, near the customers uh, counting on a multilingual help desk, on a spare parts warehouse managed with a business uh, dedicated software, sorting so the time of for goods arrangement and delivery, 
Technology and innovation are the pillars on the base of, of any our activity. The introduction of a new business management and an integrated CRM guarantee better organization in purchases and sales, even in case of work far from the office. Finally, also our technical department use a last generation software PDM. Technology, innovation, Industry 4.0. Filtex so can arrange its system with a software system that gives them the remote access each moment the customer need and want. And very soon with an iPod from mobile, sorry, with an app from mobile. In this way, it is and it will be possible to stay connected and assure an immediate assistance. Filtech special key point is capacity of design and manufacture of machines and accessories tailor-made. Step-by-step together with the customer, we study the most suitable solution designed on their needs. But Filtech, don't forget the world where we live. Always with an eye to our social commitment, a constant responsibility. Plastics, needful and precious good, part of everyday life that cannot be canceled from our day use. Not able to be destroyed while a value from which to obtain the most of its potential. For this, we want to share with you some of the projects we are involved in. The last one in chronological order that is uh, involving us in the plastic recycle and the circular economy has called Eco Design and Personal Protection Equipment Recycle, even sanitary ones, and maybe also linked to pandemic. This project, EcoPPE, financed and promoted by Veneto region, involves four Venetian universities and sees Filtech active part in the design and production of a prototype of pelletizer. It will lead to the discovery and pelletization of new polymers and biopolymers with which to produce PPE 100% recyclable and to think to a new destination of the already used equipment. Another project that shows us involved is RUR. It was born as a Facebook community and now can count even on a website, a LinkedIn page and some beautiful short film. And very important, it has today more than 69,000 followers. It can count on six languages pages, but since uh, it has been professionally and with due details already introduced from previous interventions, I don't bore you over with this. And I thank you very much for your attention and we are available for any query. Thank you. So here we are. I would like to thank all the speakers for the very interesting presentations. And that now we will have a moment to answer some of the questions that we received uh, during uh, uh, the webinar. Uh, I would like to start uh, with RUR. We have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, um, do you think that young people have an important role to play regarding plastic and its reuse? Yes, um, I do. Our IUR team strongly uh, believes uh, that educational from the very beginning is essential uh, to make an actual change in everyday habits. There are some beautiful school related uh, plastic recycling project in the world and in Italy. The first project that uh, comes to my mind is the 
contest organized by CONAI, Consortium Nazionale Imbalaggi, uh, the Italian National Packaging Consortium. In cooperation with the Italian daily newspaper, Il Corriere della Sera, which involves primary schools all over Italy. This contest was about writing any kind of composition to illustrate uh, creatively how people can contribute to environmental sustainability. Another one project is called a uh, recycling class, uh, recycling school class, uh, telling students uh, what recycling uh, actually means and uh, how any kind of waste uh, can be available for the whole society, not only economically. Uh, the project brings many educational and practical activities uh, into primary school, uh, in kindergartens, so that children could, could discover uh, the magical plastic recycling world. And uh, uh, another, the last one, not least, uh, an important project that doesn't not only affect the educational world, but the whole uh, society. UNICEF has been working together with the Colombian social um, enterprise Conceptos uh, Plasticos since uh, uh, 2019 year to recycle plastic waste uh, in Côte d'Ivoire and uh, build uh, 500 school classes for over uh, 25,000 children. We all hope that projects like this uh, will be more involved and more duplicated in schools all over the world. Uh, because uh, today's children uh, will be tomorrow's women and men. That's why it's fundamental to understand the importance of acting in a well-behaved and respectful way. Okay, thank you. We thank have a um, second question for you, which is uh, what can truly be done by recycling plastics? Uh, with uh, recycled plastic material, uh, you can make many products, uh, new water and soft drink bottles, thanks to bottle to bottle technology, as I mentioned in the presentation. Textile fiber like fleece, window frames could be recycled into uh, watering system, pipes and fittings, rainwater trains. Uh, for example, ketchup bottles or bottles used uh, for cosmetics, uh, old car batteries could be recycled into rugs, rope and tape, car battery cases, uh, bottle tops, etc. But uh, here's some recent project that have stood out for us. Uh, uh, railway sleepers made with recycled plastic. This is in an important project supporting sustainability, recycling, and efficiency. Making uh, uh, railway sleepers in recycled rubber was possible thanks to Giovanni Maria de Elise's startup uh, Green Rail. Uh, Green Rail is the, the result of uh, a technology that combines a rubber mixture of end-of-life tires and urban waste plastic. Mm, uh, the first section for the Ridge Emilia Sosuolo Railway line has already been successfully launched. Another initiative, uh, uh, the Eco Birdie Initiative, aims to recycle plastic toys uh, to give them a new life. So all the recyclable toys um, controlled, uh, checked and stored in large container and transferred to a recycle center where they are given a new life. Mm, so each plastic can be made into ones uh, recycled. On the site, in our site, rur.org, uh, you can find more information about it. Plastic recycling is important uh, reality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Samoylova. Uh, we can move now to Technofair question. Uh, this is the question. How do you choose the configuration of a plastic recycling plant? Yes, um, the choice of the system's configuration takes place according to a specific evaluation based on the customer request. 
the type of material to be treated, for which analysis are carried out if necessary. Then studying the, the most suitable system solution to achieve the required goal. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. Right. And now we move to FIMIC. We have a question for Ms. Kanaya. How do you manage after sales abroad? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so fortunately, we have many agents all over the world. And also we have many sales that are living next to our, to our customer. Together with our sales, so person that are located, uh, where is the customer located? We have also uh, uh, two project manager after sales that are following the customer remotely. So during pandemic, for example, we have done more than 70 remotely assistance and startup. And uh, we have 11 uh, installators, so technicians that are moving and installing the machine all over the world. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we move to Filtech. We have a question for um, Mrs. Veronese. What's the real benefits obtained with the Here Explain project? Yes, okay. Th thank you, first of all. Thank you to everybody still connected and listening to us. And uh, the benefits uh, for, for, for obtained uh, from this uh, project uh, are more than one, but uh, it can be conducted to uh, one mainly. And that is uh, to give uh, uh, to the customer the possibility to follow completely uh, the cycle of the reuse material. The teaser in this way, the customer uh, has uh, the possibility to dispose of uh, not expanded uh, PS granules uh, ready to be put uh, in a mold uh, for the expansion. In this way, we can see that we can say that uh, the customer has uh, in his plant uh, a circular economy under control. Okay, good. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we are at the end now. I would like to take a moment to thank everyone who attended the webinar. And uh, we want to inform you that uh, the next webinar is scheduled for February 8th and 9th, Italian and English. And we will have there uh, other four big, very big in, and interesting companies, Arburg, BNB, Engel, and Piovan. So uh, we, you will receive all the information in the upcoming weeks. And if you need uh, any uh, additional information on webinars and applications uh, and everything on GreenPlus, uh, please write us an email at info at greenplus.org. Thank you very much for being with us and have a nice day.